Hello and welcome to the third week of season 22, Season of the Witch, starting on September 5th, 2023. So for week three, let's dive right in with our legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a strong curse level, which means Petrovenge can be found in Rhea Sylvia and has the Dark Monastery mission for the next week. The Blind World features Taken Enemies and the Plague Ina Mina. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be the Keep of Owned Edges, which can be located over in the Harbinger Seclude on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the moon, the weekly story mission is in the deep. The Trove Guardian is located in the Hellmouth, while the Wandering Nightmare is the Nightmare of Hawkis in the Anchor of Light. And the Nightmare Hunts this week will be Scolus, Pride, Fanatic, Insanity, and Omnigal, Anguish. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Praxis the Technocrat will be the Empire Hunt, Cadmus Ridge will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Safeguard. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, we have the Loot Rotation for Dares of Eternity, which will be on Week 4's rotation, with the Scatterhorn Armour Set and the Pathfinder Armour Set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Stasis Precision Frame Shotgun, Fractithis, the Solar High Impact Frame Auto Rifle, Chrysia and Milo, the Stasis Precision Frame Hand Cannon, Vulpicula, the Arc Precision Frame Bow Wolf Tone Draw, the Solar High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle, Iotona Draconis, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher, Canis Major, the Arc Vice Rapid Fire Scout Rifle, Contingency Plan, the Kinetic High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle, Legal Action 2, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher, Outrageous Fortune, the Void Adaptive Frame Sword, Steel Silver C14, and the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Sidearm, Spoiler Alert. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen weekly story mission is the Communion, where the modifier is Empath, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also this week you will have Auto of Reflections Catalyst and Auto of Reflections Insight. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Veritas Armor and a weapon pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful expansion, the weekly mission is Breakneck, with Extra Shields, Lock Loadouts and Extra Champions. Barrier, Overload and Unstoppable Champions, Void Threat, Pestilence, Kinetic Overcharge, Arc and Solar Surges, with Overcharge Rocket Launchers and Galvanized on Hero Difficulty only. The Partition mission will be Hard Reset, Contest Mode Enabled with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Arc Threat, Scorched Earth, Pestilence and Martyr Modifiers, Arc and Strand Shields, with Void and Strand Surges. And the Vex Incursion this week will be Liming Harbor. In addition, the weekly Lightful Reset also refreshes the pinnacle drop for the Node Override Avalon Exotic mission on the EDZ. For the Season of the Deep, all three fishing ponds are now exotic all week. Raids and Dungeons The King's Fall Raid Challenge this week is the first encounter, Totems, called The Grass is Always Greener. Players cannot take the same brand type twice in a row. The Vow the Disciple Challenge this week is the first encounter, Acquisition, called Swift Destruction, where Guardians must kill all champions within a few seconds of each other on all rounds. The Vault of Glass challenge this week is the second encounter, Oracles, called The Only Oracle for You. Players cannot destroy the same Oracle more than once. The Garden of Salvation challenge this week is the third encounter, Consecrated Mind, called Staying Alive, where you must not kill the spawning Cyclopses in the first two rooms. And the Last Wish challenge this week is the first encounter, Kali, called Summoning Ritual. Players must activate and cleanse all nine plates, then kill all nine knights and ogres before damaging Kali. Your pinnacle raid will be the Deep Zone Crypt over on Europa, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Crypt Security, called Red Rover. This is where all guardians must be an operator and shoot the two panels on the lower levels. The second encounter, Atrax 1, called Copies of Copies, where you must not send any Atrax 1 replicant debuffs into the airlock slash space. The third encounter, Tanix Part 1, called Of All Trades. Guardians must perform each role at least once, operator, scanner and suppressor. And the fourth encounter, Tanix, called the Core 4. Guardians must dunk all four cores before each DPS phase. Also, with the Deepstone Crypt being the featured raid, this does mean that you can farm the final boss for a chance at the exotic rocket launcher, Eyes of Tomorrow. The Pinnacle Dungeon will be the Pit of Heresy on the Moon. And our third exotic mission rotator of the season will be Operation Seraph Shield over in the Legends tab, with the Revision Zero Exotic Pulse Rifle being the main reward. Craftable weapons available from this mission include the Stasis Aggressive Frame Linear Fusion Rifle, Fire and Forget. The Arc Lightweight Frame Bow, Tripwire Canary. The Stasis Aggressive Burst Pulse Rifle, Disparity. The Arc Adaptive Frame Trace Rifle, Path of Least Resistance. 
the Solar Aggressive Glaive, Judgment of Kelgaroth, the Void Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun, Retrofit Escapade, the Void Precision Frame Hand Cannon, iKalos HC, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Shotgun, iKalos SG, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Sniper, iKalos SR, and the Arc Aggressive Frame Submachine Gun, iKalos SMG, with the Warmind's Avatar Armor Set. Next up, Challenges. Acolytes Ascent 3, complete week 3 of the Bladed Path Quest for Challenge XP. Athemodology, complete Savathun Spire or Altars of Summoning Encounters with Season of the Witch weapons equipped. These include Locus Locutus, Elactic Principle, Semiotician, Kept Confidence, The Eremite, and Braze Love. Earn bonus progress for each additional seasonal weapon equipped for Challenge XP. Kinetic Spellcraft. Defeat 50 challenging combatants and earn 100 melee kills or ability final blows in Savathun Spire for Challenge XP. Doom and Boom. Defeat 200 targets with fusion rifles or grenade launchers. Earn bonus progress for defeating guardians or by defeating combatants in Season of the Witch activities for Challenge XP+. Commendation Appreciation. Earn progress by giving 10 commendations in Vanguard, Crucible and Gambit activities for Challenge XP+, and Bright Dust. Neptune Activities. On Neomuna, complete bounties, patrols, public events and lost sectors for Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Ritual Violence. Rapidly defeat targets in Season of the Witch activities for Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Iron Sharpens Iron. Complete Iron Banner matches. Earn bonus progress for wins for Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. And Ultimate Champion. Defeat champions in any Nightfall Strike on Hero difficulty or higher. Earn bonus progress at higher difficulty tiers. For Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Hello. Hello. As a reminder, your daily loss sector will show you a flag outside, which will give you details of threats, shields, champions, and exotic armor you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the loss sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master, which you can either do solo or with a fire team. But you'll only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. Tuesday, September 5th will be K1 Revelations on the Moon for Exotic Boots, Void Threat, Arc and Surround Surges, Arc Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Machine Guns with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Wednesday, September 6th will be the K1 Communion on the Moon for Exotic Gauntlets, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar and Void Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overcharged Linear Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Thursday, September 7th will be the K1 Crew Quarters on the Moon for Exotic Chess, Arc Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar Shields, Hot Knife Modifier, Overcharged Glaives, with Barrier and Overload Champions. Friday, September 8th will be the Concealed Void on Europa for Exotic Helmets, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overcharged Trace Rifles, with Barrier and Overload Champions. Saturday, September 9th will be Bunker E15 on Europa for Exotic Boots, Void Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void Shields, Shock Modifier, Overcharged Grenade Launchers, with Barrier and Overload Champions. Sunday, September 10th will be the Bay of Down Wishes on the Dreaming City for Exotic Gauntlets, Arc Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void Shields, Stalker Shield Modifier, Overcharged Snipers, with Unstoppable and Overload Champions. And finally, back round to Monday, September 11th will be Vel's Labyrinth on the Cosmodrome for Exotic Chess, Arc Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Arc and Solar Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Shotguns, with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Lead the way. Our third featured Nightfall of the Season will see us face off against Hash Ladoon, Daughter of Crota, in the Scarlet Keep over on the Moon, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This Nightfall is free to play. You'll be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, Exotic Gear, Enhancement Cores, Enhancement Prisms, Ascendant Shards and Adept Nightfall Ciphers. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty, to being common with Ascendant Shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Lower Nightfalls will have 7 Barrier Champions and 3 Unstoppable, with 18 Solar and 23 Arc Shields. Masters will have 16 Barrier and 4 Unstoppable, with 18 Solar and 12 Arc Shields. Your Nightfall modifiers are Hero Difficulty, Maximum Effective Level 1765, Matchmaking is available, Enemies have extra shields. Champions foe. You will face barrier and unstoppable champions. You can either use intrinsic exotics, use a subclass debuff, or unlock anti-champion mods from the seasonal artifact. 
an elemental surge, 25% bonus to an outgoing element's damage. Overcharge weapons. Weapons overcharged from the seasonal artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic weapons do increase damage when your subclass element matches an active surge. Two elemental surges. 25% bonus to two outgoing elements damage. Overcharge weapons. 25% bonus damage to a specific weapon type. Galvanized. Combatants have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend difficulty. Maximum effective level 1815. Includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. No matchmaking. Equipment locked. You will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts. Master difficulty. Maximum effective level 1820. Includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. Champion's Mob. This difficulty adds more champion enemies. And Togetherness. Your base health regen is reduced, but if near another player, health regen is increased. To combat champions this season, you have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods, which are Anti-Barrier Auto Rifle, Anti-Barrier Bow, Unstoppable Scout Rifle, and Unstoppable Fusion. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For Anti-Barrier, the Kinetic Bow Wish Ender, the Kinetic Linear Fusion Rifle Arbalest, the Kinetic Pulse Rifle Revision Zero, the Solar Energy Hand Cannon Ariana's Vow, the Solar Heavy Sword The Lament, and the Titan Gauntlet Second Chance, which gain a second charge of a shield throw melee, which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. And for Unstoppable, the Kinetic Fusion Rifle Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon Malfeasance, the Kinetic Scout Rifle Touch of Malice, the Solar Energy Sidearm Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow Leviathan's Breath, and the Hunter Gauntlet's Atheris' Embrace, which have a chance to stun unstoppable champions with their empowered weighted knife. Lord Shaxwing's Team Scorch the Crucible for the third week of the season. Team Scorch is a 6v6 PvP mode where all players wield a Scorch Cannon. Equipped weapons and abilities cannot be used in this game mode. Movement abilities, e.g. Lift, Jump and Glide, Sprinting and Emotes can be used. Players are forced to use a Scorch Cannon that cannot be dropped. The Scorch Cannon has 100 ammo which is replenished on respawn. Matches have a 7 minute timer, players have a 3 second respawn timer, kills give plus 1 point each, the first team to reach 60 points wins. If the timer runs out before the team reaches 50 points, the team with the largest score wins. The player's current and longest kill streaks are shown at the top of the screen below the score. And Clash will be returning this week in the Relentless Crucible playlist. Clash is a 6v6 PvP mode where level advantages are disabled and points are gained through scoring kills against the opposing team. Players are not penalised for low map control and can bunker down together or fan out as they see fit. Strengthening numbers is paramount as a lone player can be picked off very quickly by team shooting enemies. Heavy ammo can swing the balance of a match, so controlling the box can be the key to winning. Super usage, both offensively and defensively, is one way to break the deadlock. And Relic will be returning in the Crucible Labs playlist. Relic is a 6v6 PvP party mode where all players wreak havoc and destruction on their foes with a Relic weapon. Relics include the Aegis Shield from Vault of Glass, the Synaptic Spear from Season of the Risen, and the Scythe from Season of the Haunted. Each player charges their personal Relic energy by defeating opponents with their normal loadout. Upon reaching full charge, players can acquire the Relic from the Relic Depot. Defeating Relic holders and using Relics to defeat opponents earns points for the team. Delightful! And Valus Forge returns to the tower for the first time this season, bringing with him the Iron Banner. This is a week-long free-to-play Crucible event, which means there will be no Trials of Osiris at the weekend. Power level is disabled, meaning you can go into Iron Banner with whatever weapons and armor you would like. Iron Banner also brings with it challenges and a seal to become an Iron Lord. Each day for four days for each character from Tuesday Reset, Lord Saladin will give you the opportunity to receive a Pinnacle Reward. By hovering over the Iron Banner node on the Director, it will tell you how many games you need to play and with what subclass you need to equip to complete it. You can either play each day and collect each Pinnacle, or you can wait until Friday Reset to play all the games you need and receive all four Pinnacles in one go. From three for your first Pinnacle, up to 18 games in total for all four Pinnacles. For Season of the Witch, Iron Banner challenges have been split into two series. Each series has four challenges rolled out daily over the week. Series 1, players can complete Iron Banner matches with no restrictions to earn Iron Banner rank bonus multipliers. Series 2, players can earn points in Iron Banner with a specific seasonal subclass equipped to earn Iron Banner's Pinnacle rewards. As a reminder, Pinnacle rewards will give you plus 5 to your power level if you are below the power cap of 1800. But if you are 1800 and trying to reach the Pinnacle gap of 1810, then the Pinnacle will give you plus 2 in light. Players can rank up with Lord Saladin to receive rewards from his reward track. And equipping any Iron Banner armor, ornament or weapon plus Iron Banner emblem 
will progress your progress faster in ranking up. This is multiplied if you complete the daily pinnacle challenges as well. For the Iron Banner gear boost requirements, all five pieces must be equipped as gear or ornaments for it to take effect. In Iron Banner Fortress, two teams of six are pitted against each other with the objective to control three stationary objective points scattered around the arena, just like in a regular control match. However, these work a little differently. In Fortress, you earn points for each zone you hold onto at regular time intervals. If you have one zone, you get two points, two zones, you get four, all three, a power play, you get six points. Killing enemies does not count towards your points, keeping objectives does. So if you want to win the match, take and hold those zones. Conversely, it also doesn't matter how often you're getting killed if the enemy team isn't grabbing the zone from you. When a team reaches 40 points, a high value zone will spawn a countdown timer at a marked location somewhere on the map, and the other three zones will disappear. This is where Empress Keitel of the Cabal decides to intervene. When this happens, you should drop whatever you're doing and run towards the capture point. But be careful, as a giant Cabal drop pod will hit the ground, opening to reveal yellow bar turrets called Esteemed Scorpius. You'll need to defeat these turrets to open the high value zone, which grants more points when your team controls it, which can really turn the tide of battle. After 45 seconds, the high value zone will despawn, and the three normal objectives will return. You will have two opportunities per match to capture the Cabal zone, one at 40 points and the other at 80. The game will continue until the score reaches its max, or you reach the 10 minute time limit. With Iron Banner's return, this also means you have another chance to become an Iron Lord by completing seven triumphs. These are Jolder's Victory, win matches in the Iron Banner place across all events and seasons. Ganora's Seal, acquire Iron Banner armor. Each armor piece must be unique to count towards the total. Ormond's Taste, acquire Iron Banner weapons. Each weapon must be unique to count towards the total. Orwing Spirit, earn points by completing objectives in the Iron Banner playlist modes. Frostmire's Will, complete Iron Banner challenges. Grimmel's Dedication, reset Iron Banner rank twice. Durham's Howl, complete Iron Banner matches whilst wearing at least one piece of Iron Banner armor, earn additional progress for each piece of Iron Banner armor equipped. And to gild the title this season, you will have five triumphs to complete, which are Glorious Howl, win Iron Banner matches, earn additional progress for each piece of Iron Banner gear equipped. Again with Feeling, reset Iron Banner rank. On Point, earn points by completing objectives in the Iron Banner playlist modes whilst using Strand, Solar or Void subclass. One and done. Complete all four Iron Banner challenges in a single Iron Banner celebration. And down, dear friend. Defeat 200 Guardians in Iron Banner. And bonus progress for using Iron Banner weapons from the current season. Season of the Witch Iron Banner brings with it new rewards to collect, including the Woodland Warband emblem and legendary shader Dragon's Teeth. The two returning Iron Banner weapons this season are the Guiding Sight Strand High Impact Frame Scout Rifle which has a base impact of 67, a range of 65, and aim assist of 30. In column one, it can roll with a new trait called Enlightened Action, where dealing damage improves reload speed and handling. Also, Gutshot Straight and Perpetual Motion. And in column two, it can roll with another new trait called Precision Instrument, where dealing sustained damage increases precision damage. Also, Cascade Point and Kill Clip. It has the origin perk of Skulking Wolf, while at low health, God in Final Blows with a weapon grant enhanced radar and remove you from the opposing radar. And Nadir's Focus. Sustained fire increases accuracy and range. And the Point of the Stag Art Precision Frame Bow, which has a base impact of 76, accuracy of 68 and aim assist of 72. It can roll with Golden Tricorn, Vorpal Weapon and Precision Instrument, with Archer's Tempo, Shot Swap and no distractions. It also has the origin perk of Skulking Wolf, and Wildcard, where final blows with this weapon have a chance to create experimental submunitions at the target's location. That is amazing. This week should also see double XP across all Crucible playlists, including Labs and Iron Banner. And that's it for the third week of Season of the Witch. Thank you for watching. Allons-y. Guardian down.